Um, this Sunday after worship, our worship tech task force um, is going over to New Bethel to check out their live stream setup so we can learn from what they've been doing, get some ideas about how we are going to improve the quality of our live stream here at Zion. So folks who are still homebound and COVID bound can worship with us. Um, and so that if for whatever reason folks have to miss a Sunday morning, they can still worship with us throughout the week. Um, so we are excited for the possibilities that are ahead with that. Monday evening, our council finance team is going to be meeting to go over our finances. We are going to provide a report at our June congregational meeting, which is June 27th. June 27th. The last Sunday of the month. Um, at that meeting, we are going to be doing some important work with that financial update um, and adopting our new mission and vision statements. I am so excited for that. Uh, we're going to be doing a worship series the next couple of Sundays, going over what we've learned from our Who's My Neighbor study um, and what we've learned throughout this vision and strategic plan process. And we're going to break down our new mission and vision statements and think about how they will help serve and guide our ministry. On Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., our worship team is meeting. Um, and next Sunday is the last session of our Who is My Neighbor study. We're going to look at the aging in place demographic. We know that we want to serve seniors in our community. And so that's going to be a key session for learning about who the seniors in our community are and how we can serve them through our ministry. Okay, I do want to give a big, big heartfelt thank you to everyone who helped make our summer craft market possible yesterday. Folks put in a lot of long and hard hours. It was an absolutely incredible day. The weather was fantastic. Our vendors did really well. Um, it was amazing that we could offer this safe event for them. A lot of our vendors hadn't been able to do any shows for the last year and a half because of COVID. And with this outdoor one, they were finally able to get back out there and make some sales. I did want to share a thank you gift that we received from one of our vendors. She was so touched um, by the work that we did. She just was overflowing with gratitude and wanted to give us a thank you gift. So she gave us one of her custom made prayer mats. So let me show it to you. Here it is. So this has different scriptures and prayers and she just wanted to give something back to our congregation as a way of saying thank you for yesterday. Um, I want to thank all of our volunteers as well, all the hard work and hours that you all put in to make this event possible, um, to make it such a great, well-run, well-organized event. It was amazing. Right now, our total um, for our church income from this event is at $1,748. Not bad for this first time round with this new event. And we do have baked goods available for you. And the youth group made flower pots and we put some flowers in those. So you can purchase those today after church if you want to help up that income a little bit and enjoy some good things. And I do have our handy dandy credit card reader if you didn't bring cash today. Um, so check out what we have left. There are some really good treats left. Um, but thank you all so much. I do want to remind folks that we are going to dedicate our crayons for Riley Children's Hospital next Sunday during worship. Right now, our total is at just around 14,000 crayons. So, that is going to serve the kids at Riley for a very long time. Um, I am just blown away by the support of our church family and the wider community in this project, and it is just amazing. 
Um, we are having a summer sunset worship service the last Sunday of the month at last Sunday, the last Saturday of the month at 6 p.m. out on the post road side of our Ed building, just like we had worship last summer. Um, so get that on your calendar. We'd love for you to worship with us outside. And because we are doing that outside, we are going to sing together. We have been waiting to be able to safely lift up our voices, and I'm really excited for that. Um, mark your calendars, too, for Monday, June 28th from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Jack's Donuts at Southport in Shelbyville is doing a dine and donate with us. Tell them you're there to support Zion, and we will get 20% of those proceeds to go to our ministry. And next Sunday as well, we are going to celebrate the graduates in our congregation and lift them up. Um, they have been through so much this past year trying to navigate learning through COVID, and we really want to celebrate them. Those are the announcements that I have this morning, and I think Terry has one as well. So today is Pastor Sarah's five year anniversary. And to say that the last five years has been interesting is probably an understatement. <laughs> but through it all, she has guided us, she's encouraged us, she's sustained us, she's comforted us, but most of all, she's loved us. And we sincerely appreciate all that she has done for us. Oh, thank you all so much. I did not know this was happening. Let me do the card first. Make my mom proud. That she taught me to do that. Okay. Starbucks gift card, that's my favorite. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for that. And a coffee cup, also a favorite of mine. <laughs> Pastor, teach, pray, love, repeat. Friends, that's amazing, thank you so much. And you know me so well. I and replace my banged up coffee <laughs> cup back there. Perfect. Thank you. It has been an honor, a gift, a blessing to serve you all this these past five years. The time has flown by, and I am so grateful for all of you, for letting me be your pastor, um, for letting me be able to love you and serve you. It just, it makes, makes my day. So thank you so much. Friends, I invite you now to be in a spirit of worship. Martha's going to play our prelude for us.
What a beautiful way to start our worship this morning. Friends, our call to worship is based on Psalm 138. Come, let us worship our God with joy and thanksgiving. Everything in us says thank you. At worship in this sacred place, we say it again, thank you. For your love, for your faithfulness, thank you. Your love is eternal. Stay with us, O oh God, now that we may say thank you. Friends, let us worship. I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer as we lift up to God our joys and concerns this morning. Friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that you have brought us together this morning to worship here in our gym, to worship online, at home, or wherever folks might be joining us from. God, it is so wonderful that we can gather together as your people to worship and to praise you, to study your word, and to give thanks to you, O oh God. God, in these moments, our hearts are filled with gratitude at this community that you have gathered together. God, wonderful things have been happening here at Zion in our ministry, and God, for that, we say thank you. God, that you have created another beautiful day. For that, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. God, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit into our time of worship this morning, that we might open our hearts and our minds to your still-speaking voice this day. God, in these moments, you know exactly what is on our hearts. You know that on our hearts are all those people we have named this morning in our congregation who are going through such hard and challenging things in these moments. God, we pray that you pour out a spirit of comfort, comfort and strength, encouragement and perseverance as so many face these scary things in life. We pray that they might know of your love and that they might know of the eternal hope that is in you, O oh God. God, I give you thanks for our community here at Zion that through those hardest days, we know how to come together to offer love and care to each other. God, it is such a gift that you have called us to be the body of Christ. God, we lift up to you the joys in life as well. God, there has been so much joy here at Zion lately, and we give you thanks for that. We give you thanks that you have called us to do your work in this world, to serve our neighbors in so many ways, to offer safe space here at Zion so that people can grow and learn and thrive and have fun and experience joy in life. God, we can't say thank you enough. But in these moments, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Our first hymn for this morning is There is a Redeemer. And I want to highlight for you one of the words of that song, since we're not yet singing together. Um, the line, thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Let's meditate on that for a few moments.
our scripture for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through chapter 5, verse 1. Um, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth as they are facing a really challenging time. We'll unpack this a little bit more. Um, Paul has been challenged in his leadership. The community of faith is trying to figure out how they are going to move forward together. And Paul offers to them such inspiring um, words. So hear this good news. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake. So that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose Heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. May God add to the reading and the hearing of this holy word. Amen. Friends, I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer. God, we give you thanks that in this moment you have called us together to be your people. You have called us together to listen to your word. God, we give you thanks that you have called us to study, to be open to your Holy Spirit. God, in these moments, may we listen for your still speaking voice. Amen. Okay, friends, we are having a technical difficulty right now. Give me just a few moments to get things set up and ready to go. Let's see. Martha, could we play our second hymn right now as I do this? We are all about learning to go with the flow and change and adapt. today is called Indiana Geodes. When I was a kid, I remember this stack of funny-looking rocks piled up along the side of the smokehouse at my grandma's down near Seymour. I was curious about why this pile of rocks was there. 
They were brown and gray and bumpy and kind of rusty looking. They didn't look like your run of the mill rocks. There was something different about them, but I didn't know what. They almost looked like brains or something. My grandma explained that these weren't ordinary rocks. They were special. They were geodes. My grandpa had collected them over the years. My mom figures that maybe he found them while tealing the, tealing, tilling the fields of their farm. Or from out walking along the banks of the creek, he had a discerning eye for these little treasures. One day, my grandma got this big, thick bag and a little sledgehammer. And she had me and my brother start tapping away at these funny-looking rocks. Not too hard, but we still needed a little force behind each swing. Eventually, one of those funny-looking rocks gave way. And he excitedly opened the bag and peered in. There were treasures inside. We looked at these chunks and took them out and saw these jagged bits of sparkly crystal, shades of orange and pink and milky white. As a kid, I was fascinated by this. This hidden treasure was so exciting for us who knew that these funny-looking rocks had such beauty inside of them? I'm not a geologist, but from what I understand, once upon a time, Indiana was covered with this salty, briny sea, and bits of sediment would gather around these minerals as our Indiana limestone was pressed together. Over thousands of years, this briny mixture got into the cracks, and molecule by molecule, these quartz crystals began to grow. Geodes, so unassuming on the outside, are this beautiful reminder that so often, it really is what's on the inside that counts. The Apostle Paul, as he writes to the church in Corinth, was pretty raggedy on the outside by this point in his ministry. He had been speaking out boldly, sharing this radical message of Christ's love far and wide. He was growing these diverse communities of faith that challenged the status quo of the day. He dared to build God's kingdom on earth here and now and the consequences were costly. Paul faced hardship and persecution. He faced suffering and imprisonment. He did not live an easy life. And some pointed to that outward struggle and suffering and saw it as weakness. Weakness in Paul. Weakness of his faith, his leadership, and his ministry, they were looking for any and every reason they could find to undermine this work that he was doing. And so they tried to exploit these external things that were happening to him and put the blame on him. But Paul knows. He knows that it's what's on the inside that counts. He recognizes that any hardship or suffering, any external thing going on in his life that he might be facing right then in that moment is but temporary. Paul has his sights set on this bigger picture. Daily, he tends to his faith and grows in his relationship with Christ, and in doing so, Paul knows that he can face any obstacle this life might throw his way. His opponents, the ones working against him in the community at Corinth, they see only what's on the outside and they miss what's beneath the surface. Paul encourages his friends in Corinth as they experience their own struggles.
struggles and reminds them, do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. How often do we dismiss folks because we only see what's on the outside? How many times have you been dismissed because people fail to see who you really are? That feeling can be the worst sometimes. To not be seen fully for who you are and who God made you to be. But don't lose heart. You know what your inner nature is, and God knows it too. Each of us, as a disciple of Christ, has this opportunity to cultivate our inner life, to grow in our relationship with Christ, to work on those interior struggles and hang-ups, to nurture within us this great, beautiful treasure. In our worship and in our study, in our service, to neighbor, bit by bit, we can transform and renew what's on the inside. Like a geode that grows dazzling quartz, molecule by molecule, we can do that inner work to transform our lives into something glorious. One of my favorite singer-songwriters is Carrie Newcomer. Has anyone heard of her by any chance? Okay, a couple people. Carrie Newcomer. She is from Bloomington, Indiana, and so many of her songs capture our Hoosier spirit very well. She wrote this mesmerizing and surprising song about Indiana geodes that I think captures what it is Paul is getting at as he offers encouragement to the church in Corinth and helps them to see beyond the surface the glorious work that God is doing in their lives. So I want to share with you Geodes by Carrie Newcomer. Again, I'm not going to sing it for you, but I'm going to read it like a poem. No, you can't always tell one from another. And it's best not to judge a book by its tattered cover. I have found when I try, or looked deeper inside, what appears unadorned might be wondrously formed. You can't always tell, but sometimes you just know. Round here, we throw geodes in our garden. They're as common as the rain or corn silk in July. Unpretentious browns and grays, the stain of Indiana clay. They're what's left of shallow seas, glacial rock, and mystery. And inside, there shines a secret, bright as promise. All these things that we call familiar are just miracles clothed in commonplace, and you'll see it if you try in the next stranger's eyes. God walks around in muddy boots, sometimes rags, and that's the truth. But you can't always tell, but sometimes you just know. Some say geodes were made from pockets of tears. Trapped away in small places for years upon years. Pressed down and transformed till the true self was born. And the whole world moved on like the last notes of a song. A love letter sent without return address. Now you can't always tell one from another. And it's best not to judge a book by its tattered cover. I don't open them to see folks around here just like me. We have come to believe there's hidden good in common things. You can't always tell, but sometimes you just know. You can't always tell, but sometimes you just know. I'll post that song to our Facebook later if you want to take a listen to it. 
Friends, by cultivating our life of faith, bit by bit, we build ourselves up, not on earthly things, but on things from above. And in doing so, we ready ourselves for whatever storm might come our way. People looked at Paul and what he was facing in life, his hardship and his raggediness, and they dismissed him. They criticized him, they scorned him, and in doing so, they completely missed what was on the inside. This week, take some time to look beyond the surface and to recognize the beautiful lives all around you. Get to know your neighbors and your family and your friends a little deeper. Find moments this week, too, to renew your inner nature day by day. Look and see what God is growing in you. And do not lose heart, because what can't be seen, that's what's eternal. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Friends, I invite you now to consider what it is that you might bring back to God this day in order to say thank you. You are welcome to bring your offerings to God by placing them in our basket over there, by making your donations online at zionuccnd.net slash donate, or by sending your checks into the church office. And friends, I do want to celebrate in our time of offering today the many ways that you all have used your time and your talent and your treasures this week particularly to do God's work here at Zion. We have so much to offer to God in Thanksgiving, and I'm so incredibly grateful for your generosity and your commitment. Um, we are in a new month, and so our benevolence offering this month is going to go to support OCWM again. Um, that has been the main benevolence offering that we have contributed to here at Zion, and so we do want to highlight it again this month. Most of our OCWM offering goes to support the Indiana-Kentucky Conference, so stays right here locally to help our conference do God's work. The mission of the Indiana-Kentucky Conference is to live in covenant, connecting and equipping local ministries to love and serve like Jesus. And friends, I can tell you that the Indiana-Kentucky Conference lives into that mission day by day. Um, this past week, Thursday, Friday, I missed Saturday because we had something going on here. But Thursday and Friday, I got to go to our conference annual gathering, and it was such an incredible blessing to be together with our wider church family. We gathered on Zoom once again, but the programming that they offered this year was absolutely incredible. Um, our keynote speaker lifted up these really challenging and important questions. Um, there might be a new study coming here at Zion very soon on those very questions because I want to share them with you. Um, I'm so grateful for the work our wider church family does, for the support that our conference gives to pastors. Um, when the pastor needs a pastor, we go to our conference minister. And so your gifts to OCWM help make that relationship possible. So do consider this month supporting OCWM once again. Friends, as Martha plays our doxology for us this morning, do prayerfully consider what it is that you might bring to God this day in order to say thank you, thank you, thank you.
generous God, take our gifts this day and use them so that we may be part of your great work in this world. Through our giving, bring justice and love closer to all, not just in our community, but in the world beyond these walls. Strengthen our church and the whole United Church of Christ so that we may grow together each day into a powerful voice for healing and peace. God, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. And thank you for these gifts. Amen. We turn now to Christ's table. This wonderful, amazing place where there is a seat for you and me and everyone who longs to experience Christ's grace and Christ's mercy. Um, hopefully everyone got one of our communion kits as you came in this morning. If not, we do have some on the table. If anyone wants to raise their hand if they need one. Okay. We do also have gluten-free communion wafers available now as well. So if you need one of those, they are available too. Um, a reminder, you've got that first clear layer to get to your communion wafer that you peel back. And then you pull the purple tab to get to your juice. And for folks worshiping with us at home, you can get anything that you have on hand to represent the bread and the cup. Whatever you have will work just fine. Because the meal at this table is not about what we use or where we partake. It is about experiencing Christ's love. Friends, I invite you to come to the table of grace, to taste and see the eternal glory of God. Come to the table of mercy to receive God's steadfast love. Come to the table of blessing to be strengthened for the journey ahead here at Christ's table. There is a place for you. We remember that on the night when Jesus was to be betrayed, he had gathered with his friends in that upper room to celebrate the Passover meal. That meal of remembrance of the liberation of God's people from slavery in Egypt, a journey that led them deep into the wilderness. After the meal was over, after they remembered together God's saving grace, Jesus took the bread that was left and he broke it. And he blessed it and he said, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, the fruit of the vine, and pouring it out, he said, this is the cup of a new covenant, my blood shed for you and the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, Remember me. And so today we remember that no matter what it is that we go through in life, no matter how hard the suffering and the hardship and the challenge might seem, God is with us. In this meal, we know of Christ's presence in our lives. As we prepare to feast at Christ's table, let us ready our hearts by confessing our sins. I invite you to pray. Gracious God, we often forget that you are the ruler of our lives, and instead we turn our attention elsewhere. We want what others have. We look at the outside and we compare ourselves. We allow the concerns of this world to weigh us down. We become distracted by the activities around us, and we forget to keep our focus on you so that our inner lives might be renewed. God, forgive us. Strengthen our faith that we might see your presence in our lives. Remind us again that you are the Lord of our lives, the one who loves us completely, the one who offers abundant forgiveness, the one who never leaves our side. God, it is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, 
The hand of God stretches far and wide to forgive us, bringing us new life. In the name of God, whose love endures forever, know this day that you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us bless our meal now. God, with joy and thanksgiving, we turn our hearts to you as we gather at your table. We pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit into this bread and this cup that they might strengthen us for the work to which you have called us. We pray that at this table we might be reminded that your grace abounds and that it might increase in us our thanksgiving to you. God, in eating this bread and drinking this cup, may it renew our inner lives day by day. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. And this is the cup of blessing. The blood of Christ poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let us turn now to God and say thank you for this meal. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence and the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood that we may faithfully proclaim your love and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Friends, as we go forth this day from our worship, hear this blessing. Finish what you started in us, God. Your love is eternal, so go with us now into the world that we may say thank you. May your spirit guide us this week that we might be renewed day by day so that what's on the inside might grow and flourish. Friends, go forth this day to love and serve like Jesus. Amen. Amen.